we derived the velocity relationship for a serial manipulator. The relationship between the velocity of the end effector or a point k, the kth link of the serial manipulator which consists of velocity of a point p k which is the origin of the reference frame fixed to that link in our notation and the angular velocity of the link is related to the joint velocities, first order derivatives, time derivatives of the joint variables through this relationship where this joint velocities get multiplied by a matrix to give you the end effector or the last link velocities, k could be any of the intermediate links. So, this is true for a serial manipulator. Um, here j k the Jacobian corresponding to the kth link consists of columns which are given here. The columns are six dimensional vectors, the two parts of the column are one the unit vector along the axis. Uh, of the joint and the cross product of the, the joint axis with uh, the vector from the uh, previous links reference frame to the current links reference frame p k p k with respect to p naught p k with respect to p 1 and so on fine. So, this part corresponds to the linear velocity imparted by a rotation, these are all rotations. So, we have considered a serial manipulator with revolute joints, we will consider the case where there are prismatic joints very soon. Now, uh, I mentioned when we started this uh, velocity analysis that one of the reasons for doing velocity analysis is to understand some of the properties of the mechanism apart being able to find out the velocities of links and points on links. This is one of the important reasons why we do velocity analysis. So, in this context uh, this particular relationship that is the let us take the end effector now the last link. So, velocity of the end effector and the linear velocity of a point on the end effector and the angular velocity of the end effector is obtained from the Jacobian corresponding to the end effector multiplying let us now consider the revolute joint uh, manipulator. So, theta 1 dot theta 2 dot up to some theta n dot where n is the number of links and number of joints. So, typically in the case of a um, 6 jointed manipulator which is a typical case we have j being what is the dimension of j? the size of j 6 by n and in the case of a 6 revolute manipulator 6 by 6 fine. So, naturally the question arises under what conditions can we really find out this given this or find out find out this given this. This is a forward and inverse problems in velocity analysis given the joint rates find out the end effector velocity or uh, given the end effector velocity find the joint rates. So, the way we have derived the relationships there is no division by 0 in any of this except to get some unit vectors which is fairly straightforward. So, this matrix exists and so the calculation in the forward direction from here to here is always possible right that is always possible. 
So, given the joint rates finding out the end effective velocity is possible, but what about the reverse that is given the end effective velocity can we find out joint rates which will give you that end effective velocity. Yeah, for that to have a solution this system of linear equations I mean this is something you have to note that this is a system of linear equations if the unknowns are the velocities. So, the velocities occur in the linear form right. The position variables occur in the nonlinear form in the elements of the Jacobian, but our unknown is not the position, position is given in the case of velocity analysis. So, the unknowns are either this or this which occur in the linear form. So, this is a system of linear equations right. So, and this is uh, in the case of a 6 revolute manipulator for the end effector this is a 6 by 6 matrix. So, given the left hand side here under what conditions can we find out the thetas, theta dots only if the system of equations are consistent right. So, given any arbitrary value for this solution for this will occur only if this is non singular fine. What is meant by non singular or singular in the case of the manipulator? So, it turns out that in certain positions this Jacobian can be singular or rank deficient and then you cannot produce any end effective velocity you want. Or given any end effective velocity you may not be able to find out the joint rates which will produce that. So, let me show you a case yeah I will come to that fine. Right? Uh, so, uh, let uh, j be 6 by 6. Or, or let me <coughs> so let j be 6 by 6. Uh, so, j could be singular, fine. There are certain positions in which j could be singular. Let me show a similar case of a 2 by 2 system and then come to the 6 by 6 system. So, consider this. Uh, two revolute manipulator with just two revolute joints with the end point linear velocity let us consider be the only velocities we are interested in they are independent typically. So, we do not consider the angular velocity of the end effector we do not include it in the total set of velocities of the end effector let us consider that trivial simple case. Now, consider this is one position in which I have drawn this consider another position like this, but this is 180 degrees this angle is 180 degrees. Now, suppose you give a theta 1 dot here and the theta 2 dot here what can be the velocity of this point. In order to determine that let us go back to this and consider the same question. I give a velocity theta 1 dot here and a velocity theta 2 dot here. So, when I give velocity theta 1 dot I assume theta 2 dot is fixed the linear velocity imparted to this point due to the rotation theta 1 dot is obtained by drawing this particular line and drawing a line perpendicular to that. it gets a linear velocity corresponding to that depending on the magnitude of theta 1 dot this will, this will be small or big. Suppose I log this and rotate this what is the velocity that I get at the tip out of that it will be a velocity which will be perpendicular to this line. These two linear velocities being in two different directions 
I you can see that I can get velocity in any direction about this point by appropriately choosing theta 2 dot and theta 1 dot. I can get it as a linear combination of these two independent vectors on the plane because these two vectors form an independent set. Right? What about here? If I had corresponding to theta 1 dot, I will get something which is perpendicular to the line from this point to this point and corresponding to theta 2 dot, I will get a vector which is perpendicular to the line from here to here. Since this is 180 degrees, these two vectors are in the same direction. So now, can I get a tip velocity in any direction I want to? I cannot. It can only lie along this line perpendicular to the line from here to here or from here to here through that point. What it means is that when this Jacobian becomes rank deficient, it not be even singular, when it is rank deficient, the set of velocities you can impart to the end effector gets limited. Right? In the general case, you could have produced two independent velocities here. So, any velocity spanned by these two independent velocities or a linear combination of them. Because here that linear combination takes me only along this direction. So, this is a typical case of singularity. So, now comes the important question given any velocity can I generate a can I find out the joint rates in order to generate that that is the question. You can immediately see that if I had proposed a velocity let us say in this direction can I generate it with any velocity I want any I mean uh, given any velocities here can I generate that I cannot it has a common in which I cannot generate at all. Right? So, this is a singular position any indefective velocity cannot be generated by an appropriate join rate. Okay. So, this is physically uh, the case of a singular position. So, this happens at a singular position, there could be other positions of the manipulator, but it does not happen where you do not have singularity. Okay. So, now let me take the case of our uh, 6R manipulator. If you if you remember in the case of the 6R manipulator, the joints uh, there was a vertical join and then there was something which was this direction, I am showing it in the stretched out singular position fine. There was another join like this again horizontal, there was a, the wrist which had three joints one in this direction, another in this direction in, in a particular position of the wrist and the third again in this direction. and then came the last point again stretched out from here. So, this is the point P 6 that we are talking about. So, with the joints like this, this joint being vertical, these three being parallel to each other, these two being parallel to each other, what are the velocities that you can generate for the end effector? Consists of the linear velocity of the point P 6 and the angular velocity of the link 6, the last link. Right? So, look at the linear velocity of this particular point. When I rotate this, it can have a velocity in this direction. Right? When I rotate this, this or this, they are stretched out, I can have a velocity in the vertical direction. When I rotate this or this, I do not impart any velocity to that point. So, that lies along the axis of those two joints, these two. It is in the particular position in which I have held the mechanism. Fine. So, in that particular position, it turns out that this particular point can be given only velocities in a two dimensional plane. 
not in the in that three dimension which is what is required in order to give the full velocity for this one. So, this is a singular position with regard to generating linear velocity of the point 6 this is not a good position. What about angular velocity? If you remember angular velocity, it consists of the sum of the angular velocities imparted by each revolute joint. So, if these three, if there are at least three revolute joints in three independent directions, we are done. We are able to give whatever angular velocity we want to. So, by rotating about this I give vertical angular velocity in the vertical direction by about this in the horizontal direction and by rotating about this in another perpendicular horizontal direction. So, I, I am able to give all angular velocities I want at this particular on this link. So, with regard to angular velocity there is no problem, but if I decide to log these first three joints. The capability of the wrist if you remember the concurrent wrist is to be able to give any angular position for the end effector. If you extend it further we can see that we can also give any angular velocity to the end effector using the concurrent wrist because using the concurrent wrist alone you are able to orient the end effector any way you want right. So, I should be able to give any angular velocity also. I need not really use the first three joints, let us use let us accept that assumption. So, I log these three. The question is can I give any angular velocity to this joint in this position, in this position I cannot because now I can use only these three joints, two of them are parallel to each other. So, I can give angular velocity only which are confined to only a plane. My freedom is restricted in a sense. On the other hand in this following position then the point P 6 is here. So, I have actually rotated this, these two vectors are no longer parallel fine, I have rotated this, uh, this particular joint. So, now there are three axes which are in three different directions, they do not form an independent, they form an independent set in the three dimensional plane, in the three dimensional space. So, I can now impart any angular velocity I want to the end effector but not in this position with the wrist. So, wrist has a singularity which if you look at it a little more clear carefully you will remember that in the algorithm for finding out the joint angles given the end effector orientation. We found that the case of this angle being 180 degrees or 0 degrees is a special case, the singularity corresponds to that. So, there are singularities in the workspace uh, in the workspace and if the end effector if the manipulator is in that singularity then our ability to impart any velocity we want gets restricted. And typically these singularities turn out to be at the boundary of the workspace. In the case of the linear velocity they turn out to be on the boundary of the workspace. You can see that this is stretched out. In this particular case of the planar manipulator this is stretched out. When it is folded in also when the tip is at the boundary at the boundary of its workspace you will see that the same singularity is there right. So, singularities are associated with often um, the boundaries of the workspace, but not in all cases singularities can occur within workspace also. Um, <coughs> Now, let me come to one of the questions which was raised. It is not necessary that the 
number of joins in a manipulator is only 6, could be 7, could be 5, could be more than the and the more than 6 or less than 6. So, consider the case where it is more than 6. So, n is more than 6. So, in that case what about the inverse problem that is given v and w, how do you find out this? Rather than how many, how do you find out this? How many solutions do you think there are? There are typically infinite solutions, right? If there is a solution, there are infinite solutions. And suppose uh, this is less than 6, then there may not be a solution. Yeah, there may not be a solution. There may be one solution, now there may be infinite solutions also. It depends on again whether this becomes rank deficient or not, right. So, the issue to look at is whether this is rank deficient or not that is one issue, the other whether the system is consistent or not. This can be rank deficient and the system can still be consistent. So, let me explain what I mean by this, these are, these are concepts in linear uh, solution of linear equations, you must have seen it earlier or uh, use of linear transformations. When this is rank deficient, what it means is that the columns of this Jacobian does not form an independent set, right. So, for example, if this is a 6 dimensional case, there is n is 6, then this columns may when it is rank deficient, it, it actually spans, the columns may span a 5 dimensional space or a 4 dimensional space depending on what the rank deficiency is. If it is rank deficient by 1, it spans a 5 dimensional space. What it means is that whatever this is, this can only be a linear combination of these columns, right. So, when it is rank deficient by 1, there are 5 independent uh, uh, columns here. The, the subspace, this is confined to a 5 dimensional subspace of the 6 dimensional space. In this particular case, this gets confined to a one dimensional subspace of the two dimensional space. This gets cons confined to a five dimensional subspace of the six dimensional space, fine. So, that is what occurs in rank deficiency. But you can still specify this to be within that subspace which is spanned by these columns in which case the system is still consistent and you can get solution, okay. So, if we choose this appropriately, you can still get solution. Another very important point is the which you have to note. <coughs> at this singular point, I said this is at the boundary. Can I move outwards? I cannot move outwards. In fact, I cannot have a finite velocity which is out of this line, right. What about inwards? Can I move inwards? Yes, no. The question is actually I, I should now ask the question in a more specific way. Can there be an inward finite velocity? It cannot. There cannot be any velocity which has a component which is in this direction, right. There cannot be any velocity in that. So, there cannot be a finite velocity in that direction. But in order to move inwards, I can start with 0 velocity and accelerate. So, that is possible. Just because a manipulator is at the end of its, uh, I mean is uh, stretched out and is at the end of the boundary, uh, workspace at the boundary, does not mean that you cannot move in, you can. Only you need to move with, start with 0 velocity inwards. Fine. 
Now for the case of prismatic joint also we can derive the Jacobian it turns out to be fairly simple. So if there is a serial manipulator and let us assume one of his joints is prismatic then the end effector the point where which we are trying to find linear velocity. Suppose we lock we, we have found out the linear velocity of this point can be obtained by locking all joints except the one you are now considering and just moving that joint with the appropriate velocity the velocity imparted to this point through that consider that add up all such velocities you get the velocity of this particular point right. So, if you go by that if you if this is a prismatic joint you lock everything else and you move the mechanism at the prismatic joint only. What happens is that this whole thing translates in this direction which gives a velocity in this direction for the for this particular point fine. So, the linear velocity imparted by motion of a prismatic joint is in the direction of the prismatic joint at that particular position. So, it is as simple as that what about the angular velocity imparted to this by this motion there is no angular velocity imparted to it because this translation a prismatic joint allows only translation you have locked all the other joints only this joint is moving. So, right now this will be translating with respect to the global reference frame when I move only this. So, there is no angular velocity imparted by the prismatic joint. So, I can generalize for a serial manipulator the Jacobian in the following way. So, let me consider that these are the I will call it as column 1, column 2. So, Jacobin column 1, Jacobin column 2 and so on up to Jacobin's column k multiplying. Now, I will call this as q 1 dot q 2 dot and so on up to q k dot. where q i dot is theta dot is theta i dot if i is revolute and q i dot is d i dot if i is prismatic. that is the ith joint is prismatic. You will remember that d i is offset of the joint and theta i is the angle of the joint. Now, what about j c i? It consists of in the case of revolute joint and prismatic joint consists of two uh, halves upper and lower. The upper half is z i minus 1 z i minus 1 cap the uh, the axis along the revolute joint cross r p i p naught that is the top half and the bottom half is simply this this we had already derived. In the case of the prismatic joint J C i will be z i 
minus 1 cap that is the top half 3 by 1 vector and the angular velocity cannot be generated by this. So, this will be a 3 by 1 matrix of vector of zeros. So, this is the general expression for a serial manipulator with prismatic and revolute joints. This can be derived in detail, but the revolute case is more difficult, this is fairly simple and trivial. Fine. Now, let me uh, pose a problem which you can try to solve. Go back to that uh, block with a few three pegs that we try to pick up using a manipulator and place somewhere right. Consider that we use the uh, gripper to pick it up and then raise it to some other position. Right. So, we had specified the first position, the second position, then the third position before we actually brought it in to test the hole, the pegs aligned with the hole and then, then brought it down to make the pegs just touch the holes or be on top of the holes. So, some third position and the fourth position. So, 3 and 4. So, we now move from 1 to 2 straight up so as to ensure that these pegs do not actually go into the table on which they are kept correct there is no interference that is the reason for doing this. Now, if you try to do this with a manipulator of the sort that we have considered what will happen is that when it goes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, we can calculate the various theta i's as functions of time. These four positions are given. So, we know the starting position at, at time t is equal to 0, we know the starting position of theta i and finally, it, it has to go to some particular position 2, then 3 and then maybe 4. So, it has to go from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. It's, it will obviously start with 0 velocity, go like this and come to 0 velocity. Now, how, how are we sure that when it goes from here to here that this is not going to dig into this particular table? just because it starts with 0 velocity or because we have placed 2 above 1. None of th these things actually fully guarantee that it will not dig in. It gives you a broad control of, over interference, not a very precise control. In order to have a precise control over interference in this particular case, we should have specified that from 1 to 2, the end effector should only translate. That is a very strong demand, but if we had said that, then we can in ensure that it does not actually dig in. 
So what we need to do is at any point of time from here to here we have to check at fairly close intervals whether any of these specs is touching the table or not, right. Suppose it is touching at some position and the next position whether it will go in or not can be obtained by looking at the velocity of that point at that instant. Okay. So, these are things you can check out in detail once you do the inverse kinematics and you get this theta i's, you do the uh, joint trajectory interpolation, you get the theta i's, then do a forward uh, calculation to find out the positions of the thing and you can check using velocity also whether it can it will really do that. So, velocities can be used in certain ways like this. So, uh, what we had done mainly uh, so far was uh, address two important kinematic problems, the more important being position analysis both the forward and inverse and uh, also the next step there which is velocity analysis. So, going one step further we can do acceleration analysis. I will I'll not do the derivation, I will just indicate what the final form of the equations are and we usually do acceleration analysis in order to do dynamic analysis. So, again I will indicate what the form of the equations there are fine without deriving the whole thing. Uh, but there is one thing that we can do right away having done velocity analysis, we can do static force analysis of this particular mechanism turns out that the velocity analysis problem and the static analysis problem are duals of each other. The connection is through principle of virtual work, okay. So, let us pose the problem. So, we have a manipulator whose end effector is this which has the reference frame attached to that. And there are joints prismatic or revolute at which uh, we apply join forces or torques now the question is what is the relationship between the end effect of forces and the join forces so by force i use the i uh, i mean generalized force so it could be a torque or a linear force fine so what is the relationship between So, uh, F and T where these are the end effector, end effector force. So, this is the end effector force vector fine. Any system of forces can be represented by an equivalent system of a single force and a couple right which requires 6 parameters for definition. This is the set of joined forces. So, assume that F is in the direction of the angular and linear velocities of this end effector and the stocks are in the direction or the joint forces are in the direction of the velocities of the joints. Okay. Then uh, the principle of virtual work tells us that uh, for admissible motions, uh, the the virtual work done by this system of forces is zero. 
right. So, if you use that then we have the angular velocities and linear velocities which are in the direction of those virtual displacements which are admissible. Transpose this force F which is the end effector force giving us the virtual work corresponding to these forces plus the joint velocities transpose each element multiplying the corresponding element in the joint force is the virtual work corresponding to the joint forces these have to add up to 0. right and we have an expression for this in terms of q dot that is the Jacobian multiplying q dot gives you this right. So, if I substitute this into this what I get is q dot transpose Jacobian transpose multiplying f sorry uh, yeah multiplying f plus q dot transpose t. So, I put this whole thing take q dot transpose outside. So, I get the joint talks here and now this is true for any q dot that I apply I have right which means that the two sides of this are the same element, element by element. So, I can write the equation the the joint torque is equal to minus of J transpose F this is a static force equation. So, the the end effector forces and the joint forces are related through the same Jacobian as the end effector velocity and joint velocities. Fine, but now the singularity actually is a little in the has to be interpreted differently that is given any f end effective force you can find a joint torque which will balance that. because there is no singularity associated with the calculation of this. This is fully defined only its inverse could have problems right. So, the problem is that in singular positions when this turns out to be singular J and J transpose are singular if they are full matrices uh, square matrices they are singular together right. So, if this singular it turns out that for any given T what happens you cannot find an f well the statement is not really that for any given t you cannot find an f which will keep the system in equilibrium fine it may turn out that the system may accelerate you cannot have equilibrium with any t singularity amounts to that okay So, this is something you can work out with that two revolute manipulator which I had shown try to work this out for that and you will immediately see what it means physically ok. It will turn out that in order to keep that particular system in equilibrium in the stretched out position which uh, we had seen let me go back to that in the stretched out position in order to keep this in equilibrium it turns out that the torque I apply here and the torque I apply here have to have certain relationship fine I cannot apply any torque I want and keep it in equilibrium. So, this is this is very important this is very useful it turns out that if we do velocity analysis we have already done static analysis ok static force analysis.
Now, uh, so if you take a rigid body, the linear velocity of any point Q can be obtained by from the linear sorry the linear acceleration of any point q can be obtained from the linear acceleration of the point p in the following way acceleration of the point q is acceleration of the point p plus two terms one comes from the angular velocity and the other comes from angular acceleration. So, the acceleration of the body is parameterized by these two three dimensional vectors, the linear acceleration of a point and the angular acceleration of the body. So, if you look at the kth link, the linear acceleration of the point P k with respect to P naught is taking derivative of this particular position vector twice basically and the angular acceleration of that link k. If you, you can derive this, turns out to have the following form, exactly the same Jacobian which you saw earlier the kth one multiplying the angular accelerations. So, I will call it q 1 double dot q 2 double dot up to q k double dot all this by the way this is true only for uh, serial manipulators ok. The way I am writing it is true only for serial manipulators. Basically it comes from the fact that uh, the kth links acceleration or velocity is affected only by the joints from k to 1, 1 to k, not from the joints after, after that, that is because it is a serial manipulator. Well, this is not all here, to this you have to add some terms. In general, let us say some f k a a k dimensional vector f k is a k dimensional vector let us say uh, which are which is a function of all these joint variables q 1 to q 2 uh, q k and q 1 dot uh, to q k dot where this q 1 dots and q k dots occur in quadratic form q 1 to q k may occur in the linear in the non-linear form. Right. Uh, these occur in the quadratic form that is the way if you it, it, if you take derivatives twice it turns out to be like that. So, in this you have the Coriolis acceleration, centripetal acceleration all those things are involved here. This is the form fine it has this part which is exactly the same as the velocity relationship and you have this part which consists of quadratic velocity terms ok. You, I mean you are not required to derive this maybe you can try your hand and see how it is for simple manipulators ok. So, having come this far let us just look at the form of the relationship for uh, the dynamic equations because you may require it in control. So, I will just give you the, the form of the relationship. So, but before I come to that let me ask the following question. Suppose the manipulator is not a serial manipulator, but a parallel manipulator. How do you get this velocity relationship? What needs to be done there? Uh, 
conceptually is there are several loops in the manipulator. You need to write each of these loops, consider each of these loops as a serial manipulator which is actually gripping itself, which is a closed loop essentially. Fine. The end effector grips the base, so it is a loop. And then you need to write the velocity equation for each of them and then you get the total set of equations using which you can solve the total system. But whatever that be, the problem of finding out the velocities given some velocities turns out to be a linear solution of a system of linear equations always. Fine. Now let us look at dynamic analysis. What is given meant by dynamic analysis? Well, in very simple terms, given the system and the forces acting on it, find out acceleration, or in the reverse way, given the system and an acceleration to be generated, find out the forces which will generate that. Okay, that in very simple terms, you can define acceleration analysis as that. So, you basically have to get the relationship between forces and acceleration. is what we need. Okay. This relationship in the case of the of a manipulator or, or a general mechanism uh, can be obtained uh, using typically two approaches are used typically there are many approaches many formulations. One is a Newton Euler which is our idea of considering rigid bodies the free bodies and apply the Newton Euler equations in three dimensions to each of them. So, it includes the reaction forces also which can be eliminated later and the Euler Lagrange which is based on an energy formulation and systematically using the Euler Lagrange condition for uh, for solution of a particular variational problem and which uses generalized coordinates and reaction forces do not appear explicitly in this. Finally, if you re remove all the reaction forces at joints, you get an equation of the following form. The joint uh, torques that you apply generate acceleration, this is some inertia matrix. So, you get q double dot, these are vectors by the way, I do not put curly bracket over vectors right now, plus uh, the, the Coriolis, the quadratic terms in velocity is coming from Coriolis and uh, centrifugal terms. So, so, these are quadratic in q dot, there are masses and inertias involved here also. Plus, uh, if you have uh, if you have uh, viscous friction at the joints, there may be a term corresponding to that. So this will be linear in Q dot due to viscous friction being linear in the velocities. Plus, there may be a term coming from the weights of the links which have to be supported. Functions of Q, function of Q. right plus we have a term which some matrix which I will call J bar it is not exactly the single Jacobian that we have it is a composite set of Jacobians this is a matrix multiplying all the forces on each of the um, on each of the uh, uh, links 
so external forces on each of the links all put together into F let us say right. So, the torque has to balance that has to balance the gravity has to drive it against the viscous friction has to overcome the centrifugal and uh, Coriolis forces and still generate some acceleration. Right. So, mass is m is the inertia matrix m is typically non singular is positive definite. So, you can find the q double dot given at tau right. So, given finding q double dot given tau and q and q dot and inertia parameters friction external forces etcetera is the forward problem of calculating acceleration. And given tau uh, given finding out uh, the forces to be applied or the joint forces to be applied tau by the way is the joint forces. So, could be linear forces or torques depending on whether they are prismatic or revolute joint. So, given a desired acceleration and of course, the position velocity and the rest of it is the is called the inverse dynamics problem. The inverse dynamics problem is a very important problem to be solved in certain types strategies of control that is that are used for manipulators. The forward dynamics problem is not directly solved there, but this particular equation the form of the equation its properties they are important in control fine. So, dynamic analysis ends up being something like this although it is easy to state arriving at this is not that simple requires fairly lengthy calculations to arrive at these various terms here fine. So, with that uh, I will conclude uh, position kinematics of uh, the manipulators.